and uh, welcome to the uh, Sean Kelly on Movies uh, podcast. And um, uh, this uh, podcast is in advance of the uh, Academy Awards, which are happening on um, Sunday, uh, March uh, 27th, uh, 2022. And to um, help uh, preview the Oscars, I have with me uh, Alker Alec Barova from um, Let the Movie Move Us at moviemovesme.com. Hello, Alker. Hello, Sean. Thank you for having me here. Mm-hmm. Okay, so um, I actually thought um, we'll actually um, start by um, talking about the uh, categories that will not be presented during the telecast because the Oscars are more concerned about ratings this year. So they decided that eight categories will not be presented on the telecast. So that uh, includes uh, all three uh, short film categories. So um, did you see any of the uh, short films? Well, um, to be honest, I think the short films are the one that um, I have missed uh, to watch, unfortunately. But I think, um, which I normally do every year, but it's um, it's such a shame not to have this category or any other category that they have decided because of the ratings to reduce and not to uh, broadcast them live. Um, and I think, especially the writers, directors of the short films, uh, they spend and put sometimes more effort. They have the limited budget, they have a limited, a cast and crew, they have um, uh, so many aspects and the obstacles that they are meeting along the way and um, not letting them to acknowledge uh, the win or the nomination live broadcasted on during Oscars to me is just, um, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate. But when I'm going back to just to understand why would this happen, I guess it's just... Um, Again, the main issue is the academy's uh, ratings, but but what do we do to bring the awareness or the, to encourage the audience to to be even concerned about shorts or to watch them? It's it's something obviously needs to be done because um, I'm not trying to defend the academy in here, but there's a kind of decision that they had to also uh, they they might have some kind of intel or the logistics or the the numbers, the formula they have followed, like, you know, to come up with this. But again, at the end of the day, it's a collective effort that needs to be put towards making sure that um, the academy won't ignore those those, academy, those categories ever again. Well, out now is the uh, Disney and Pixar animated film Turning Red. And a uh, few years ago, uh, Domi Shi, that film's director, won the uh, Academy Award for uh, Best Animated Short Film for her short Bow. So um, this year, the uh, nominees for Animated Short Film are Affairs of the Art, uh, Bestia, Box Ballot, Robin Robin, and The Windshield Wiper. So I've I've actually um, seen all five of these. Um, it is actually interesting that the animated nominees this year are a bit more um, adult oriented than they usually are. So, um, and uh, probably the one that I would pick in this category is the uh, windshield wiper, which is of like a very uh, interestingly animated film about love and relationships. Yeah, I actually also have um, um, I have not have noticed that. Um, the content, um, even um, even just to go back to, I, I know I might be changing the subject in here, but even the flea, right? Uh, we normally got used to the, the animated films, like uh, in animated category, it should be something like the, the kids oriented, not the adult oriented. And the flea is obviously not the, not, not the kids oriented. You can't let the child watch it, but, but in the meantime, it's so well done. So yeah, to your point about the short category for animated, it's, it's, it looks like um, the the kids are no longer the target for animated films. I mean, not for the academy at least, but more like an adult, I guess. Um, it's again, it's a subject matter that they touch upon. 
and its importance. And again, just going back to the categories that uh, even that the category that they have not presenting and they won't be presenting life. I hope they will be surprised and they will still do it. But um, but I have noticed as well in terms of the subject matters and um, the concept that touches me on is more broad. It's more broad, and um, I like it. I, it's it's my miss um, uh, that I have not I have not seen all the categories, and uh, unfortunately, sometimes you just don't have time to watch all of them. But I thought to watch some of them at least before the academy starts, so then I will have some ideas. Especially now that they are disregarding them, so I think we do need to pay more attention to this. So then, you know, they will realize that there's an interest in these categories, and they should never ignore it again. I'm sorry if I keep repeating myself. Oh, no, it's okay. Um, So um, next we have a live action short film, which the uh, nominees are uh, Alakachu, Take and Run, The Dress, The Long Goodbye, On My Mind, and Please Hold. So of these, I would probably pick The Long Goodbye, if only because it is co-written by and stars Riz Ahmed. (laughs) Yes, I know that Riz Ahmed is in in the long goodbye. Um, I think that's that's the one that has been favored to win. Um, but I hope you know the Riz, Riz Ahmed is um, is an actor that um, it's it's kind of he can tell the short narrative stories, whether it's a long. But um, I think that's what at least I am reading that the. That the long goodbye is the one that might might win, but like I said, we will see. But um, it just uh, again, that's not not being broadcasted live is again. It's something that I I, I hope um, the big actors when they appear on the red carpet and uh, then talk about this is they will. They will point us out. Okay, and um, then there's uh, documentary uh, shorts, and the, the nominees are Audible, Lead Me Home, The Queen of Basketball, Three Songs for Benazir, and uh, When We Were Bullies. Now, um, this one, I really do not know uh, which way it'll go because I've only seen uh, one of them, which would be um, Audible, which I saw at part of of hot dogs last year. It's about uh, deaf football players, and I think that actually has a good chance of winning. I I think um, I I am uh, I have seen it uh, as well, and uh, I think why why it's um, it may win is just you know same goes to the coda. I, I don't I don't want to say that it's because of the, the it's rep- represented the deaf community. No, but I think. Um, I haven't seen the other nomination, and I, I guess I, I think it's just a lesson learned for me for the next podcast to be better prepared, perhaps. But uh, but for the audible, um, uh, I, I think it, it, it has a better chances to win because of its concept and it's you know we we keep getting this um, like um, the 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 football players right we we hear that those big, big names I mean don't even ask me to mention one but uh, but what do we know about the people that cannot hear and then they find themselves on the on the big field and when they how they navigate this like you know what I mean I think the the audible not just because it is Netflix because Netflix has another documentary in there I believe two or three they have in there, but the, the Audible is the one that actually bring awareness for the deaf community to the players with the disability, with the hearing disabilities, and what they do to kind of to fully function and do what other players do. Those are do not consider themselves as with a disability. Okay, so um, the um, rest of the uh, off-air um, uh, categories are um, some of the uh, technical categories. So we have a uh, Best Sound, the nominees are Belfast, Dune, No Time to Die, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. And I'm guessing that Dune would get that one. Um, I saw I saw um, the most of them in the theater, and I think that the Dune, I think that's the one that might get it. I am pretty sure because um, uh, you see, it was the 
when you're talking about, uh, for instance, the West Side Story or the power of the dog or even No Time to Die, you don't feel like um, there's something something more outstanding than what does Dune. The Dune, Dune sound is like a, a, is a different, the different uh, storyline that is that exists in own in own world. And what it does, it, it actually allows the the actors, the image, and everything to play together. So, in my opinion, the sound that I and I saw Dune like a two times in the theater. Once I saw it during TIFF and on IMAX on a big screen, um, and then by the Lakeshore. And the second time I saw it, and um, it's just, I'm pretty sure it's going to win. No time to die, yes, but it's a James Bond movie. I mean, I mean, what else they haven't come up with in terms of the sound, right? Or, or Belfast, Belfast might um, kind of surprise, but um, the West Side Story is uh, is a good in, in terms of the sound, but uh, again, I do agree with you. It's going to be, it's going to be Warner Brothers Dune. Yeah. So next uh, we have uh, production design. The nominees are Dune, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, The Tragedy of Macbeth, and uh, West Side Story. So for this one, uh, I think it could be a flip between Nightmare Alley and The Tragedy of Macbeth. Uh, to be honest. Uh, I agree with you. Was a tragedy of my bad that the production design is is quite awesome. It is, and um, the Nightmare Alley is. Uh, I, I I liked everything about that film. To be honest, I don't know why it's why it did not even get actors nominated for the film. But um, but I I don't know why. I feel like the um, the Dune was um is something that they have tried. Uh, they tried new, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> I am more siding towards Dune, to be honest. But I agree with you that uh, the, the tragedy of Macbeth can, uh, can surprise, same as a Nightmare Alley. But um, but maybe Dune is the one that I am trying, I am leaning towards to. That's, that's my prediction, to be honest. But uh, again, any of them, even the West Side story can surprise, but... Not so much. I think it's just there to conclude the, the list of five nominees. So next is a category that was a whole lot more interesting 40 years ago, but um, it's uh, makeup and hairstyling, and this year's nominees are Coming to America, Cruella, Dune, The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and uh, House of Gucci. And I will say The Eyes of Tammy Faye will probably get that one, even though it would be pretty funny if they award Jared Leto's Super Mario makeup. <laughs> Oh no 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 no! I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't even know what does the House of Gucci is doing there. I mean, uh, really, I they, you know this entire thing about the House of Gucci, but it's a Lady Gaga things and like a snap in the Oscar or, I mean, I think they're just trying to give uh, the the House of Gucci nomination. It just like probably to drag more people in terms of the rating, but the eyes of Tammy Faye, like I saw this movie just again recently it was um, uh, as part of the Oscars uh, contenders, like um, it, was a, it was a variety. And to be honest, the makeup in there is just speaking for itself. Cruella, that will be my second pick. Coming to America, forget it, never. Never. I don't even know why it got. I would even because Eddie Murphy that. plays multiple characters. Yes, but he, it's not the first time he's doing it. Yeah, it's not the first time. But but the, what I'm trying to say is that the, the eyes of Tammy Faye. What does what did they do? Is it really transported uh, Jessica Chastain into the character? Because what I had to do is when during the thief that was the second movie that I saw the eyes of Tammy Faye. The first one was a drive my car, and we will talk about it obviously. I hope, but uh, but there's something about the makeup of the eyes of Tammy Faye that it really fascinated me. Like um, um, it was so on spot when I was reviewing and watching the the video of the real videos of the Tammy Faye. Like um, the performance is a whole different story, but uh, I think they got it right. They got it right. So they okay, yeah. okay. So then we have original score, which the nominees are: Don't Look Up. Dune, Encanto, 
Parallel Mothers and the uh, Power of the Dog. And I'm not so sure about this one. Uh, uh, you know, to be honest, I'm going to go towards the Parallel Mothers or, or Encanto. Maybe, maybe my third choice will be Don't Look Up. But the Dune, but you know, whenever whenever I'm hearing Hans Zimmer, it sounds like a Oscar, 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 because it, most of his scores that I am are really good. So yeah, I would prefer to have someone like Alberto Iglesias to get an Oscar for a part of the Mothers. But something tells me that I mean it might be Dune, but. Can the Nicholas Brittle from Don't Look Up to surprise? Yeah, why not? So it's going to be like, you know, 50-50. It's not a 100% choice in here to me. And and then the uh, most confounding category that will be off the broadcast is film editing, which the nominees are Don't Look Up, Dune, King Richard, The Power of the Dog, and Tick, Tick, Boom. But seriously, we all know the movie is made in editing room, mm-hmm. in an editing, an editing room. How can you even ignore this? Those people spend hours and hours and hours in their lab to go through scene by scene, put the sound, put everything all together to make the piece, to make the film. It's like they can change, the editing can change the narrative of the film. Yeah. And not having that included is, um, I don't know, but... I'm um, gonna, I can't, sorry, sorry. I'm going to go off the beaten path a bit and say that Tick Tick Boom has a good chance of winning this because of the cross-cutting between the narrative and the uh, live performance aspect. Yeah, I am also leaning towards the Tick Tick Boom, to be honest. Uh, the editing was really on spot in there. Um don't look up, not quite, because again, what, what you're right in terms of picking up the tick tick boom, because uh, uh, it goes back and forth and uh, it recreates that that atmos- atmosphere that you need to be into it. Uh, maybe maybe King Richard may have some chances because uh, I'm not fond of the King Richard movie. I think it's good. I wouldn't say it's great, but uh, editing in that film was. To be, to be honest, it's my second favorite so far. So we'll move into the categories that are actually going to be on the broadcast. So we have uh, visual effects. Uh, nominees are Dune, Free Guy, No Time to Die, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and Spider-Man No Way Home. And I say Dune gets this. Yeah, I don't think we should discuss any other titles in here. It's a Dune. It's 100%. Let's just move. <laughs> Let's just move on. <laughs> All right. So I guess next we'll do uh, original song, uh, which is uh, Be Alive from King Richard, Dasurigitas from Encanto, Down to Joy from Belfast, No Time to Die from No Time to Die, and Somehow You Do from Four Good Days. Okay, so... I, I have to actually um, talk a bit about this. So if it was actually nominated, I would say we don't talk about Bruno wins this. But yeah, 100%. because it, it was because uh, uh, Leo Manuel Morella d- decided not to submit that song because he had no idea how popular it was going to be. So he submitted uh, Das or Gitas, which is a Spanish language uh, ballad, and uh, it's not as uh, catchy as uh, We Don't Talk About Bruno, which they actually just announced is going to be performed at the Oscars. <laughs> and so I, I say uh, No Time to Die wins this. Billy um, Eilish, winner. Yeah, I think, um, you know what? I do feel um, like I'm not a Billy Eilish uh, fan, but there was something about the No Time to Die song that it really, it really made sense, you know, for the film and uh, the sound and everything. Like, uh, to be honest, I kind of agree with you that uh, No Time to Die might win, might win. 
it might be an encounter again. They may just do it uh, just to kind of acknowledge the the second song, but um, but no time die no time to die for me. But the the academy the academy may decide the encounter though. But it just I mean, it's between what you think and what I think, and what will the academy want. That's a different, but I mean, they want they want Lin Manuel Miranda to get the EGOT, which yeah, is but, uh, uh, Emmy, Grammy, Tony, and Oscar. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you know, like how many times the James Bond songs won? Like uh, quite a few two times. Two in a row so far. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Are we gonna get the third one in a row? That's um, I, I if I'm not mistaken, it's like a, the record breaking right in here. <laughs> But um, yeah, I am. I'm regardless. I'm going for the no time to die. I won't feel bad if it's encounter, but but it's no time to die. Choice it is kind one. of funny because no time to die is actually a 2020 song, but because Bond was delayed for over a year, it's now it's only qualifying this year. <laughs> No, well, yeah, I, I, I don't think the years should really matter in yeah. here because again, the, the academy based, they go based on the release, right? But yeah. uh, it was it's already been played widely everywhere across the globe. But um, mm. I am, it's an amazing song. Like I said, I am not a Billy Irish think it fan. Might, think, it, think it might have won a Grammy already. <laughs> it, it did, but it did, uh, but uh, again, uh, I, I think I, I think it's no time to die, but. What I think and what does the academy think? So we will be proven either right or wrong this Sunday. Okay, so next we'll do um, costume design, and we have uh, Cruella, Cyrano, Dune, Nightmare Alley, and uh, West Side Story. And I say West Side Story gets this. No, 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 no. Uh, my opinion, it's Cruella. Cruella is the costume that I've seen this year or in any other year, is the best so far. Mm -hmm. I am going for Cruella. Oh, what a colors. Like a, I mean, you may like or dislike the film, but I know people that don't like Disney's films. And I mean, I know people that don't even like watching the films, but they saw Cruella and they loved the Cruella, not because of the actual film, but because of the costumes, even though I enjoyed watching Cruella. But the, the costumes were, were just... just just the best I've seen. It's like a, so much passion into it, like a dedication. Every <laughs> uh, every costume could tell its own story, and it was shaping an image of Cruella, really. And not just Cruella, everybody, every single character involved. I think it's that Cruella. That's, that's my personal opinion. Now, the next category, I think, is pretty much a shoe-in, documentary feature, Nominees are Ascension, Attica, Flea, Summer of Soul, Writing with Fire. Flea is winning this. Um, yeah. Uh, it can be. Actually, the Flea is... Uh, I've seen the Flea like three times, and I mm -hmm. saw it once at the Sundance Film Festival. If I am watching something more than once, it normally wins. So... Mm -hmm. I, I think I agree with you with the flea that it may it may win. It brought something new. Do you know what I mean? It brought something new to the documentary genre, and I think it will be reused and um, taken into consideration, even for the new filmmakers. It's I think it is. I think that that's the flea. I will go with the second one. It will be the writing with the fire, but it's a long shot to be honest. I would prefer Writing with Fire to win as well, but uh, but the Flea, yeah, the Flea is the one. Now, now Flea is interesting because it is nominated for three categories, and the second of which is animated feature film, which the nominees are Encanto, Flea, Luca, The Mitchells vs. the Machines, and Raya and the Last Channel. Ryan, the last dragon, and uh, even though I think Flea has a good chance, um, Encanto is winning this. Oh no, Encanto is um, is for sure. The Flea, yeah, maybe, but it's a wrong category. If you're, if there's, what I always think, if Disney has the best concept, 
a best subject, uh, the most popular, like like it was a turning red, right? I don't know what will be coming next. To me, the turning red for now is the winner in the next year, right? right? But uh, but to be honest, if I if if that's my 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 humble opinion, that Raya and the Last Dragon should be the one to win, not mm-hmm. Encanto. But Encanto, I guess it's a popular, it's a good, it's been loved by everyone, but the Raya and the Last Dragon was also loved. Mm-hmm. Equally, I would say. So it's a very, very tough category. Like, uh, yeah, and, and they both, we both agree. And, and they're both Disney animated films that celebrate diversity. Yeah, they're, they're both celebrated diversity. And they even, but the Netflix, the Mitchells versus the Machines. That one was good too. That yeah, talked about a, the, well, the, that's the, pretty... Sony Animation is getting a lot better in recent years. <laughs> no, that's true. So yeah, I mean, I agree with you. Encanto is winning, but I think what the Academy needs to start doing is that uh, not to try to give an Oscar to the popular, cons- uh, pop- popular animated movie, but but the one that actually is resonant is the one that speaks much louder to me is the Raya and the Last Dragon. But Encanto is good too. So. I'm not going to be upset with any of them because I'm a Disney fan, so <laughs> it just happened to be. Then the third category that Flea is in is international feature film. The nominees are Drive My Car, Flea, The Hand of God, Lunana, The Yak in the Ca- Classroom, and The Worst Person in the World. And I'm going to say Drive My Car wins this. Well, like I said, the drive my car is the first film that I've seen during pandemic on the big screen. Unbelievably good movie. So good, so powerful. Oh my God. Every aspect of the film is just much better than any other film that you will see in this category. But when I saw the worst person in the world, wow, that movie kept me on the edge of my seat, the same way Drive My Car did. So I will say the flea has no chances in winning in here. Maybe in the documentary category, yes. Uh, Drive My Car, it's a 100% is winning. But let's hope that I will be surprised and the worst person in the world might win too. Because that is equally, it's no less, no less, Sean. The worst yeah. person in the world is really amazing. Yeah, I, I I like that film, um, and it, ha- and it it's it's between that drive my car and flee. Those are the only three in the category, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. So I think that drive my car will win, and it should. But I prefer ties. So that means the worst person in the world and the drive my car. They need to be the best because those two movies are the best international film that I've seen. Okay, so now now we're moving into the major categories. All right. Okay, so best adapted screenplay. We have Coda, Drive My Car, Dune, The Lost Daughter, and The Power of the Dog. Um, this is... This Coda. Is a, Coda? Yeah, Coda. Do you know how many times I've seen Coda just only during the Sundance Film Festival? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Five times? Yeah. And that's the only film that I've seen five times. It seems it seems goofy, right? It seems like um, there's nothing special in there. But no, Coda is the movie, is the adapted screenplay that, in my opinion, that might not going to surprise. It's just gonna win. There's there's no surprises there. To me, it's a Coda. Okay, so then uh, we have original screenplay, and the nominees are Belfast, Don't Look Up. King Richard, Licorice Pizza, and the worst person in the world. I'm going to say the worst person in the world wins this. Uh, I wish. I wish that the worst person in the world might win. Um, I agree with you, but um, the Belfast was good too because it's also like a more like um, Kenneth Branagh's like a personal story and it was well written. Belfast, was, Belfast, uh, Belfast is actually kind of interesting. Is like when it played at TIFF and won the People's Choice Award, everyone thought that it was a shoe in for Best Picture, but now it's a distant third at the least. I think so. 
I think so. I, I think it was the... Uh, it still might surprise us, to be honest, but for the adapted screenplay, obviously, um, it is between the worst person in the world. But I think the worst person in the world screenplay was much more complex, more difficult to adapt. Original screenplay, I mean, than Belfast, to be honest. Um, because it, it jumps within a year, uh, like uh, over the time, right? It's evolves and 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 it it gives so much room for the character to evolve to grow and become as someone she might didn't even know that she can become like you know what i mean it is the search of of herself for herself throughout the time and um there's something about the worst person in the world that's screaming that i need to win i need to win but the belt says no that's going to be me well, we will see which one gonna which of them which one of them will win the fight We'll see. Okay, so actress in a supporting role, we have De Jesse Buckley in The Lost Daughter, Ariana DeBose in West Side Story, Judy Dench in Belfast, Kirsten Dunst in The Power of the Dog, and um, a genuine Ellis, I can't pronounce that, uh, in King Richard. <laughs> and um, I'm going to say that uh, Ariana DeBose wins this and becomes one of the few people to win an Oscar that was already won by Rita Morella for the same role? <laughs> uh, I think so. Uh, you know, because the Rita Morella's character or even Ariana DeVos character that they both portray the same person is, is so interesting that um, it looks like um, if the actor who portrays the character, the character grasps, grasps, it, grasps it fully, then they can they can deliver it. Do you know what I mean? And Ariane DeBose perhaps had a good good lesson, or obviously Rita Morena at the, the school, of the, the universe, <laughs> like the way she acts and everything. So I think um, there was some kind of inspiration coming from Rita Morena or even from the original West Side Story. So yeah, I think Ariane DeBose was able to capture 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 it. So I agree with you. The Kirsten Dunst might might um, surprise in here, but uh, I think not so much though. Ariana the boss has it. It's all just subtle. I mean, subtle in a, in a sense that she'll just get it. She deserves it. Okay, so we have actor in a supporting role. We have Kirian Hines in Belfast, Troy Kotzer in Coda, Jesse Plemons in The Power of the Dog, J.K. Simmons in Being the Ricardo, and Cody Smith McPhee in The Power of the Dog. And I'm going to say uh, Troy Kotzer wins. I'm right here with you. Troy Kotzer, I mean, like I said, I saw Coda like five times uh, during Sundance. <laughs> and, uh, and that's insane. Like uh, so much emotions, so much emotions in there. I mean, for sure. 100%. Let's not even discuss any other nominees in here. They're, they're all great, don't get me wrong. They are amazing, amazing. Whether it's a Cody Smith McPhee, J.K. Simmons, uh, Jesse uh, Clemens, or Clara Hands, but the Troy Cox, uh, he, he made it. He, he actually, made the movie. Actually, I don't know why J.K. Simmons is nominated. <laughs> He wasn't that memorable in being in the. Uh, no, he was. It's, it's not about. Um, remember uh, the Oscars movies, sometimes not so memorable as well. Mm -hmm. But what you do with the character, how do you deliver it? What do you do to interpret what you have read or what you have understood? So I think J.K. Simmons' character, especially in a few scenes in there, like um, I saw the being the recorders like two times. I think I do agree with his nomination. I don't think. He, he ended up in there by accident. It wasn't an accident. I just want to be fair. I just want to be fair that with every single person that nominated in this movie, they did not appear there or did not show up there just like because, you know, they had nobody else to nominate. They did the job, right? Okay. So we have uh, actress in the leading role, Jessica Chastain in The Eyes of Tammy Faye, Olivia Coleman in The Lost Daughter, Penelope Cruz in Parallel Mothers, Nicole Kidman in Being the Ricardos, and Kristen Stewart in Spencer. And I am pretty sure that Kristen Stewart will be winning the Oscar. Well, um, <laughs> I, you know what? I really, I really want her to win. I do. And 
to be honest, this is the only category that I am not going to be upset if any of them wins. Christian Stewart, yes, but uh, there's something about Penelope Cruz's performance. I mean, to be honest, Olivia Coleman, she was great, but uh, but Jessica Chastain and Christian Stewart between the two. Nicole Kidman was great as well. She can also like can get it, but but I don't know. Christian Stewart, I want I want her I want her to win because when I saw Christian Stewart Spencer performance. Uh, I had the same vibe I got from Penelope Cruz, Parallel Mothers. I saw the Parallel Mothers like three times. And there's one particular scene when she does this, the DNA test, and when she gets the results. Or when in the cafe, when they, she meets the, the girl and uh, they talk. And when she becomes, I don't want to spoil the movie, but when she realizes that there might be something wrong with the child that she has, that's the performance of like it's more like a body language. Do you know what I mean? She didn't mm-hmm. have to say anything. Her body she spoke for herself. For, and I want Penelope Cruz to 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 surprise everybody and get her second Oscar. You know, I'm a big fan of Nicole Kidman, but I also I also have to be fair that I'm not the fan that I'm going to say okay, disregard everybody else. She needs to win it. Nicole Kidman was great. It was great. But I just want to say about the subtle, about the nuances of the story. Uh, I think to me, it's it's between Jessica Chastain and Penelope Cruz and Christian Stewart. Between like the 50% is Christian Stewart, 25 is Penelope Cruz and Jessica Chastain. But again, Jessica Chastain and just say, you know what, guys, forget it. I'm getting it. So I saw the just the eyes of Tammy Fly Faye just like a few days ago. Um, she was good. I'm I don't know. I'm leaning towards Jessica Chastain, but I want Christian Stewart to win. But I just it's it's a, one of the toughest category in here to be honest. Everybody deserves. Okay, so we have uh, actor in a leading role, and we have the nominees are Javier Bardem in Being the Ricardos, Benedict Cumberbatch in The Power of the Dog, Andrew Garfield in Tick, Tick, Boom, Will Smith in King Richard, and Denzel Washington in The Tragedy of Macbeth. And this is actually a very tough one. Uh, I am going to go out of a limb and say Benedict Cumberbatch wins. Uh, actually, I would like that. Because um, Benedict Cumberbatch, he he delivered two layered performance. I'm not going to say multi layered because it actually was, but he uh, portrayed the character of what we see and what he sees himself from inside. The two, like same way Nicole Kidman did with the show Ball, two different versions of the character you are seeing in one person. So to me, Benedict Cumberbatch. I am not even considering Will Smith, even though it looks like it's it looks like they might give it to him. But if just to be fair, it, to me it's a Benedict Cumberbatch. So I I agree with you. I do agree with you. Even with a Javier Bardem, Javier Bardem being the Ricardos, uh, <laughs> what he did is like a he he captured the the power of the. Of the Cuban man was able to dictate the rules back then in a golden age of the television and Hollywood. Like, really? What did Javier Bardem did? He showed that he was the boss. You know, he was. Nelson Washington, there's nothing, no surprises in there. I mean, he's always good. I mean, how can you? I mean, I would prefer to have Denzel Washington than Will Smith, right? But, but Benedict Cumberbatch, I'm gonna all for it. Okay, so now we have directing. So the nominees are uh, Kenneth Branagh for Belfast, uh, uh, Drive My Car, um, forgot the director's name, like Rinko, I can't pronounce, (laughs) Uh, Licorice Pizza, Paul Thomas Anderson, uh, Power of the Dog, Jay Campion, West Side Story, Steven Spielberg, and uh, I think Jay Campion is going to win yeah. As for the Drive My Cars director, it's uh, Rusuke Hamaguchi, if I'm able to pronounce it properly. <laughs> Rusuke Hamaguchi. But um, I think it's um, it's a Jane Campion. 
for sure, it's a, a Jim Campion. But uh, uh, I would say that Drive My Car can surprise too, because that's the second that's the second complex film to produce. Uh, um, sorry, not produce, but direct. So, but the Jane Campion, I think she has it. So I don't, I don't believe we even have to go further. It's just Jane Campion. Okay, so finally, we have Best Picture. The nominees are Belfast, Coda, Don't Look Up, Drive My Car, Dune, King Richard, Licorice Pizza, Nightmare Alley, The Power of the Dog, and West Side Story. And I think we're going to disagree on this. I want to say The Power of the Dog wins Best Picture. Um, again, the most seen movie of this year for me was Coda. And I am, and I believe even I did put on Facebook when I saw Coda that it has to win. It, there's no way, no way there's anything, any other movie better than Coda, to be honest. Yeah, Don't Look Up is great. Elvis is amazing. Like Dune, wow. Like um, Nightmare Alley, just so fascinating. I was mesmerized by the whole movie. Like uh, The Power of the Dog, yeah, probably. I don't know why I am leaning towards Coda. I just want Coda to win. Not because of the it's of the deaf community, deaf community. No, no, no. It just uh if you pick any other movies in this category, what which one you will personally watch many times and never and never get tired of it? Hmm. Many times probably do. Yeah, fair enough. Dune is good. To me, it's, for instance, it's Coda. I just, just can't go and turn it on and watch it again. I will feel like it's my first time. There's something about Coda is so refreshing. Nothing is so refreshing in the West Side Story or in Belfast or in Don't Look Up. Well, actually, Don't Look Up, it was so funny. I mean, I need to we have this one discussed in a, in a different time, but uh, another time, but... Uh, there's lots of disagreement in this category, isn't it? Yeah. But I'm going for Coda. I just want Coda. That's it. Let it be the least popular opinion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, so you don't think there's going to be a uh, Parasite repeat and uh, Drive My Car wins Best Picture? <sighs> Might be. Might be. I mean, it could be. Drive My Car, like I said, it is my second favorite movie of the year. My second favorite movie, movie of the year. So, yes, maybe between Coda and Drive My Car. I don't want to change my mind. But I think first one will come as a Coda. Second one might be Drive My Car. Yes, the, the popular opinion is perhaps the power of the dog. But I'm going to go for Coda. If not, it's a Drive My Car. Not because of the parasite. But I think Drive My Car is even better than parasite, in my opinion. It is that good. So we'll, we'll see what will the Academy decide, and uh, it will be more fun to watch this weekend. Yeah. And I'm really well, looking forward to it. Well, the Academy Awards are happening on Sunday, March uh, 27th at um, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. I'm actually going to be uh, watching it at the uh, Bell Lightbox, so at a special members uh, watch along. So that'll be fun. And uh, uh, Alker, Alec Barova is found at uh, Let the Movie Move Us at uh, moviemovesme.com and uh, social media. And Yeah, uh, the social media is the, um, the moviemotion.com on Facebook or just moviemotion.com on Twitter. And that's it for the show. Yeah, thank you so much, Sean. It was really nice um, having this discussion and um, I'm glad we had this. Uh, I think it's very productive and um, good luck to all the nominees. Um, each and every one of them did not end up in there by accident. Like I said, they all deserve to, to be nominated and to get their recognition and for their hard work. The Sean Kelly on Movies podcast is a production of skmmovies.com. Episodes and show notes can be found on skmmoviespodcast.ca or skmmovies.substack.com and can, can subscribe to us via Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and where else podcasts are hosted. Support us becoming a paid subscriber at skmmovies.substack.com.